The PSVR 2 came out at the end of February 2023. I pre-ordered it from launch and in many ways it launches VR on a path that hopefully will propel the entire industry forward for the next few years. But after using it for about a month instead of my Quest 2, um, I realised that actually there's a ton of things that the Quest 2 is amazing for that the PSVR 2 just can't do. So in this video I'm going to break down all the differences and show you how both of these devices can actually outperform the other in different situations. Yes. Both of them do outperform the other one. So I'm going to break this down with a score that's going to sort of give you an idea of which one is the winner, I guess. But before we get into that, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the price. The MetaQuest 2 costs roughly £400, $400. So. Now, I talk about whether it's actually worth that price in my full review of the Quest 2, but in comparison to the PlayStation VR 2, it is definitely cheaper. The PS VR 2 is currently £550 or $550. Again, we can decide whether that is good value for what it offers separately. But the main thing is, is that is it better value than the Quest? The thing that you have to bear in mind is that you are already paying an extra £150 or dollars more than you would be for the Quest. And wait, you also have to have a PS5. So you can't just buy this and jump into VR. You need to have invested at least a thousand pounds before you even start on this one. Now, it does get confusing here because you obviously have to have the PS5 for this thing to work for all the games, the graphics, everything like that. You need the PS5. So technically, we should be factoring that in when we're talking about the price tag of this. So instead of looking at about 550, we're looking at actually at over a thousand. But what's that I hear you ask? You already have a PS5. Well, then you don't need to factor it in because it's only £550. But if you don't have a PS5 and you spend all the extra money and then also get a PS5, you now also have a PS5 and you can play non-VR games. And the PS5 is worth it for its own reasons because the PS5 is such an amazing console. So uh, it's hard to get a sort of very good value proposition here. So you see what I mean? Um, it's complicated. So I think the simplest way of doing it is just comparing the actual prices of just the headsets. Um, it's a bit more convoluted than that but that's the best way to talk about it um and the quest wins obviously because it's cheaper hooray now the display for the next sort of few categories it's going to start being quite hard on the quest it is a few years old now um and obviously it's not got the newest equipment in it so these early rounds it's probably going to take a few hits the psvr2 display starts us off with a 2000 by 2040 pixel resolution the quest is 1832 by 1920 now it doesn't seem like a huge difference but it is still a win for the playstation added to that the psvr2 has an oled display which means you're going to be getting better contrast, you're going to be getting better blacks, which makes for a much more immersive environment, much more realistic. Now, it also supports HDR, which means um, it's going to be brighter. You're going to see a much bigger contrast from black to bright if you're going from a dark scene to a light scene. It's going to actually affect your eyes. That's definitely going to be better than an SDR display. Now, ultimately, from trying them both, I mean, especially in some games where there's a lot of colour and stuff like that, the PlayStation VR 2 display just is beautiful. The colours are way more vibrant. It just pops. The contrast is obviously much more intense. Um, so, I mean, very clearly the PlayStation wins. Now, optics. This is actually a very important part of the whole VR experience and something that um, people don't necessarily think about. Now, this essentially is how the lenses um, that are in the headset pair with the display to make a realistic image. Now, there are a few aspects here. First, we have the lenses themselves. We also have the field of view and the IPD. That's essentially how you can position the lenses so they're the right distance uh, to match how far apart your eyes are, essentially. So first of all, to clear things up, both headsets use the same type of lenses, Fresnel lenses. Now, these are both very decent lenses. Um, they're not as good as the sort of um, industry-leading uh, pancake lenses. Um, those are the sort of the gold standard, you could say, in lens technology, I guess. Essentially, both headsets have the cheaper and slightly worse type of lens in them. But when you're comparing the headsets, they are pretty much the same. Now, the field of view on the Quest is about 90 degrees. And the what the? Hello? They have everything. They 
seen everything. Have you been surfing the web on those dodgy sites again? No. Have you? Then you should have been signed up to this video sponsor, Atlas VPN. When I was a young boy, one of the biggest dangers was going and getting sweets off of that man with the black van, even if they were the best ones. My parents were so glad when they finally got me inside with the safety of the internet. Yeah, the internet can be a bad place. Unfortunately, the internet is filled with creeps like this, who can access and sell your data for profit, and your internet service provider isn't going to do anything to help you. Actually, they can sometimes be the ones selling your data to the highest bidders. And this is why a VPN can be so helpful. And with Atlas VPN, you can be set up within minutes, and this little Atlas guy is going to be protecting you. And not only does it protect your data, Atlas VPN can also stop ads, malicious links, and malware. Now, you're a millennial Gen Zer who's been brought up with this never-ending, constantly growing growing source of content that's keeping you always entertained and always on to the next thing where you just constantly need more and more information and data inputted into your brain to be able to cope with the horrendous way the life is just falling apart around us. Well lucky for you, Alice VPN can create your virtual network in various places across the world, unlocking location restricted content. Now you will never run out of great shows to watch. Now if you want this little Atlas man to protect you, grab the big deal because now Atlas VPN Premium is only 183 per month. First you get 3 months extra and a 30 day month back guarantee. To protect your privacy and to get the many benefits of Atlas VPN for that ridiculously low price, make sure you click the link in the description below. Be quick, it's a limited time offer. Thank you to Atlas VPN for sponsoring the video and thank you for checking out Atlas VPN. Now the field of view on the Quest is about 90 degrees and the field of view on the PlayStation VR 2 is 110 degrees. It doesn't sound that much different um, but when you're thinking sort of your vision as a human being is what, just slightly under 180 degrees, it's actually more of a difference than you'd expect. And it's probably one of my things that I noticed the most, not necessarily from putting on the PlayStation, but from then going back to the Quest and putting the Quest on. It's like, wow, that um, it just feels a lot more narrow. IPD is another huge plus for the PlayStation VR 2. With the Quest, you essentially have three presets. Uh, you have three positions where you can position the IPD and the distance between the lens, and you just click them in. So it's quite easy. Um, but there's no way of actually tracking it to your eye other than just from how it feels. Um, and there's a good chance that you're going to select the wrong one or it's your, your actual IPD is sort of halfway between the two. Um, and it can potentially lead to things like headaches and even nausea. Uh, so that's something you have to bear in mind. Now the PSVR 2 blows it completely out of the water. First of all, it's on a wheel, which means you can adjust it to a very precise location. It's not just three presets. You can have full control control of that. Secondly, it takes all of the guesswork out of it uh, by actually giving you an option to show um, the IPD on the screen and it uses the eye tracking feature which we'll get onto later um, and it uses it to sort of see where your eyes are so then you can um, manually move the lenses apart and match it to where your eye should be and you can see it in front of you and you can make sure it will be as good as it should be. Now the only downside in terms of optics for the PlayStation VR 2 is that there, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, um, but there is a sort of strange effect when you're wearing the headset that you don't get on the Quest um, and it sort of gives the impression of there being a slight filter. So imagine, let's say you're wearing like a helmet and you're looking through um, the gl glass visor of this helmet, like a motorbike helmet. And on the helmet, there's like slight smudges and scratches and stuff like that. Um, there's a bit of that sort of sense where it looks like you're almost looking through some form of filter. Um, sometimes it's more obvious than other times. It's especially obvious um, if you're looking in like sort of the dark blacks so if you just have a black screen or some something very near black and you're looking around um that sometimes can it can appear and it's it is like you're looking through a sort of filter i guess is the best way of saying it um in bright environments you notice it a lot less it's a weird one because as time has gone on i've gotten used to it and it doesn't actually i I didn't really notice it now, but it's something that I definitely noticed a lot more when I first put on the headset. So yeah, weird one that. Honestly, it isn't something that is bad enough that I would say it bothers me. It doesn't bother me at all, but it was just something I noticed. And the Quest 2 doesn't have that. So, I mean, that's a positive for the Quest 2. However, despite that, the PlayStation VR 2 still takes this category. PS VR 2 win. Graphics. Again, we're comparing a next-gen console to mobile gaming essentially. Obviously PlayStation VR 2 is going to get the win in this category, but there is something that is important to note. The graphics will be as good as the machine powering the graphics. So on the Quest 2 you have a mobile processor built into the headset 
and that's what's going to be running the graphics so you're going to get mobile game quality graphics um, playstation has a console powered gaming graphics so obviously you're going to get that type of thing in the vr headset but that doesn't mean if you use the quest with a separate thing like a gaming pc and you use that to power the quest then suddenly the graphics become very good so if you're using the quest for pc vr then you're, it's going to be as good as whatever pc you're using to run those games. Now, if you are using PC VR with the Quest 2, um, it is important to note that the uh, PlayStation 5 has a very important feature which makes it a lot more better optimized for virtual reality and it takes advantage of the eye tracking feature. Now the eye tracking is great for other things and I'll get onto that um, but one of the main things about it is something called foveated rendering. That essentially means instead of having to render the highest graphics for the entire display of what you're seeing, um, it only actually renders fully the area you're looking at and the rest of the display is just sort of left in sort of low resolution because Ultimately, that's how your actual eyes work, is that when you're looking, what you're looking at is sharp and everything around it is blurry, so you don't notice that. And in the headset, you don't notice it. And it just allows the PlayStation to have just that little bit extra performance advantage. Now, that's something that's important to note because actually you're going to need a more powerful PC to get the same graphics out of the thing than the PlayStation and PC gaming is much more expensive than console gaming in the first place. So if you're going purely on a sort of value adjustment there for in terms of graphics to, um, yeah, the PlayStation still wins. Now in theory you can get better graphics on a PC if you power it enough, um, but I feel like that's not necessarily that achievable for the majority of people. So yeah. PlayStation win. Comfort and design. So the Quest 2 is notorious for sort of being one of the worst headsets in terms of comfort. Essentially all of the weight is distributed to the front of your face. So um, especially if you don't have um, an, a separate head strap for it that you can fit on. Um, it is essentially just a big weight attached to the front of your face weighing down on your cheeks. Um, and in order to sort of keep it secure, you've got to tighten it to your head a lot and you're left with sort of big red marks around your face. It's not the most comfortable design in the world. In fact, the foam that it comes on it as well when you buy the thing um, is really scratchy and horrible. Uh, you can, again, you can change it out, but um, if you're going to be changing it out for third party things, I mean, am I reviewing the accessories or am I reviewing the headset? So um, yeah, it's not the best. Comfort wise, it's um, definitely not amazing it's not the worst and i think some people go on about the comfort of it it's definitely copable i mean i doubt i've never really had any issues uh, but if i'm comparing it to the playstation the playstation is definitely more comfortable now the psvr2 essentially what it does is it has a halo design instead of um just sort of the face so um, instead of going from your face around your head like that and having the pressure sort of in there and on top um, it just has um, a sort of ring that goes from your forehead to the back of your head and it just sort of pushes on those two areas um, which are more comfortable places to have things i would say um, your forehead is something where it's going to deal with a lot more pressure a lot better than your cheekbones. Now the sort of um, leather style rubber padding and stuff like that that's on those bits as well is a lot more comfortable, it's spongy, it's quite soft. So um, all in all, it's just it's quite a comfortable headset. I do find that if you're wearing it for a long time and you sort of tighten it too much, it can be a little bit uncomfortable at the back. I'm sort of like sort of spitting hairs here. It's not, it's not uncomfortable in the slightest. PSVR 2 wins. Now it does start to get a bit harder. Ease of use. As far as ease of use for the Quest goes, once it's been set up, you can pretty much play anyway. You just put it on, um, you can, it automatically wants you to set up a boundary and you can set a new boundary wherever you want. Um, and you can just play. It's uh, yes, yeah, super easy. All of your games are stored on the headset, so um, you don't need to take anything anywhere. There's no base stations or anything like that. You just put it on and go. You can play it in any room of the house. You can play it in any house. Now, the PSVR 2 is probably easier to set up because all, all the setup's done on the PlayStation, which you would have already done before you get the PSVR 2 anyway. So there's just a very small amount of setup that you need, just plug it in and it's ready to go. But you have to have a PS5 in the room where you're playing and your games have to be on that particular PS5. So if you want to play these games, 
you need to take your PS5 with you, which obviously makes it harder. There's also the whole wire thing. Having a wire is obviously not easier because you have to step over the wire and move out of your way. Um, it's not bad, and I don't. It's something that bothers me less than I thought it would. But there's no beating wireless. Like you, when you're using the Quest, there's no wire at all. Again, with the wire, you're limited by how far away from the console you can go. With the Quest, you can go anywhere. Now, not having to charge the headset is definitely a plus with having it wired because it's there's no battery. It's wired. So again, that's technically easy because you don't have to remember to. Do plug it in every so often but the controllers for the psvr2 still need charging so you still have that issue just not with the entire device and they need charging way more often than you need to change batteries on the quest controllers you need to charge the sense controllers probably about half as often as you would need to charge the quest headset um so i guess it's better but it's, it's not really now as much as um the ipd solution that i mentioned earlier in the optics bit is worse for the quest um it's definitely easier to just click the ipd than having to open up a menu and move the things around so um that again i guess is something that's easier about the quest so i mean ease of use quest wins now Tracking is uh, another category which um, is going to be quite close, honestly. Both headsets use inside-out tracking, which means they have the cameras on the front, um, which they use to track the room around you and to track the controllers. I never really have tracking issues with the Quest. I don't think I've ever actually had tracking issues with the Quest. I did have um, a couple of tracking issues with the PSVR 2 when I first got it, literally got it from launch. So I think there was um, a few bugs that got ironed out because I've not had those issues since. Essentially it did lose tracking every so often. Um, and then it, I don't know whether it was because I was sat near the TV and it was sort of seeing what I was seeing on the TV or something. I, I don't know, honestly, but it was losing tracking and I've never had that on the Quest. Now, another thing to note is that the cameras on the Quest are slightly slight further out on the headset. Um, and I think they can get sort of a wider picture of the room, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but actually um, for tracking something going behind your head, um, you get better tracking when your controllers are sort of not in vision because it you just they stay in vision of the headset for longer. So if you're doing something like reaching over your shoulder, I do feel like the Quest does that better than the PlayStation. Again, it's so minuscule that you probably wouldn't actually notice it, but it's something to bear in mind. So it's very close, but Quest wins. Games. Now, this one is um, a difficult one to actually split apart because I feel like there is one winner that has to be the winner by default. And this could change as time goes on because obviously the amount of games that are available on these devices is going to change as time goes on. The Quest undoubtedly has the better gaming library just because it's been around for so long and it's got a vast huge library of games some of the games are terrible don't get me wrong um, but there are a lot of really good games on there and a lot of surprisingly good games considering this is a mobile standalone headset it's got some really good stuff on there now the psvr2 launched with um, fewer games obviously um, but surprisingly again very good games um even having some sony exclusives triple a games uh, on vr uh, it, yeah it's unbelievable so things like gran turismo and um horizon and stuff like that so games that just sort of aren't possible on the quest 2 now the playstation is also bringing a lot of the sort of vr classics into this uh, console so um that's exciting and ultimately the game library is actually much more impressive than i was expecting it to be bringing in some sort of pc vr classics as well things like pavlov and stuff like that now the future of psvr 2 looks really bright in terms of the games that are going to be coming um but that's the future and I'm not comparing the potential, I'm comparing the reality. And the reality is that the Quest has just got a much vaster, wider gaming library. And also has got loads of free content, which you just don't get on the PlayStation. I think there's like a f one free game on the PSVR 2. So if, if you want to be getting VR games on the PlayStation, you have to pay for them and they're not cheap. Horizon Call of the Mountain, it was something like $69.99. And don't get me started if I think that's worth it. It's a hard sell. Don't get me wrong, I love the game, but that's a lot of money. So ultimately, I think 
the Quest undoubtedly has to win that one. Features and gimmicks. Now, the PSVR 2 has a few extra features, things um, that are just better than the Quest, I guess. I mean, it works with a variety of controllers, so you can use um, the VR controllers, or you can use your DualSense controller. You can even use third-party controllers like, um, like a steering wheel, for example, if you're playing Gran Turismo. Um, so it opens it up to a really large sort of variety of styles of gaming. Now, the um, Sense controllers, I think they're called, for the PSVR 2, um, have adaptive triggers, which is a really cool little feature, um, which are sort of been stolen from the DualSense, I guess. Um, that adds um, another sense of sort of immersion. Um, again, with like the haptics and stuff like that that you've got in the... Um, remotes, that's amazing. Um, I mean, the haptics in general, because even the headset has haptics on the front of it, it vibrates your head. Um, and it's surprising how much it's used on games, even third party games. It surprised me just how much that actually affects you. But also, it actually is a really, I wouldn't have thought being vibrated on the head would have been something that would have made me feel more immersed, but it really does. Especially in something like Gran Turismo, when you crash and it vibrates your head, it, it's a shock, <laughs> genuinely. The video pass-through is clearer and it's easily accessible through a button on the bottom of the headset. The headphones that are included um, are sort of clipped onto the back of the headset and tucked nicely away in little... Um, holders that are there so that's quite a nice touch and they sound much better than the Quest's built-in speakers. Eye tracking is amazing. I mentioned earlier how it is used for foveated rendering but um, there are actual um, feature uses for it as well so for example in Horizon um, when you're using your bow it can be assisted your aim is assisted by where you're looking and there are games that sort of track when you blink and stuff like that which is a really nice touch it's something that's a different type of game mechanic you wouldn't have expected now the quest that has batteries that are sort of last longer than the psvr2 but they're not rechargeable um, you do get pass through again and it can be easily accessible by double tap inside of the headset if you've set that up. you can customize and change out the head strap for different things um but again i don't know how whether i can I can factor in that the fact that it's customizable, I guess, um, but I can't really go on based on third party accessories because you have to buy them and this just doesn't isn't really fair for the comparison. But you can get third party accessories for the Quest much easier. It has very good hand tracking. So this is an entirely new way to play games. So um, if you have a Quest, it can tell your hands and you can use your hands as controllers. And there are actually games where it uses that mechanic fantastically well. Now this one is um, difficult, I guess, to split. I think the PlayStation VR 2 just wins it by a hair. The Quest does have a few cool things about it in that sense. I mean, the PlayStation, in terms of like hardware style features, I think it does just edge out. Non-gaming use. Now, this is a big one. This is essentially the thing that's the biggest difference between the two headsets. The PSVR 2 is unapologetically a gaming headset. It's designed from the ground up to give you a really good immersive game experience. Um, even the sort of way it blacks out and it has like the sort of nose cover to fully immerse you in that experience, all the haptic feedback, all of that stuff, is just designed to give you the most immersive experience you can get. Better haptics, better light, better contrast, uh, better color definition, better audio by having the headphones instead of just out outside the speakers. Obviously better graphics, all that stuff. It, I mean, it's better for gaming if you're comparing it in that sense. The Quest, however, is so much more than just that side of virtual reality. Sure, you can watch media and stuff like that on a virtual screen on the PSVR 2, so you can uh, watch Netflix and stuff like that, um, as if you were had in a black room, completely dark, blacked out room with a screen in front of you. But with the Quest, um, you can just do so much more it's it's a social experience there's tons of different social apps where you can just hang out with people there's 360 vr experiences you can browse the web uh, you have a home environment you can personalize how that display looks in front of you you can move it far away move it closer you can even essentially travel the world and stuff like that this is all stuff that you can do on the quest that you just can't do this stuff on the PlayStation VR 2. And with this fact, I can give you a true summary, despite the sort of score where the PlayStation does win. The PS VR 2 is a true gamer's headset. If you want the best VR experience for gaming, 
then that's going to be the way to go. You don't need to look any further than that. PlayStation VR 2 is way ahead of the quest in that regard. But if you're not just a virtual reality gamer um, and you want to use VR for more experiences, then then the quest is obviously the way to go. And ultimately, I do think we can break this down into a couple of categories again. If you don't have a PS5, the quest is a great entry point. You have tons of fantastic games. It's way cheaper than having to get a PS5 and a PSVR 2. And it can do more things. Now, if you are a heart in and heart out gamer and you don't have a PS5, I, that's probably the way to go. If you can invest the extra money, get a PS5 and the PSVR 2, you have two amazing ways of playing games. You can do normal flat screen games and virtual reality gaming, and it's all amazing, high end, it's just brilliant. Now, if you already own a PS5, it then becomes harder, essentially. If you care more about having an amazing VR gaming experience, then the PSVR 2 is the way to go. But if you want to do more than just game well then the quest 2 is still a great purchase but guys thank you very much for watching that is all for me i will see you in the next one